All right, I hope this works and I'm happy with what I did. I think I'm learning not as much as I would like to. I'm sure I'm going to make a, a bunch of more mistakes, but yet again, I'm just trying to remind myself I got to scale back every everything I want to do uh, going forward into 1915. Everything that's screaming out for me, constantly telling me, Chris, man, you don't have enough supply. You don't have enough troops and you're it takes forever to extend railheads and so on and so forth. I mean, doubly so. Um, due to the fact I'm talking about the Russians, you know, uh, going through um, uh, Poland here and whatnot. So, and remember, I've also included a finite uh, length for the line of communication. So during non-winter months, it's eight movement hexes for an army or core HQ, or six uh, movement points for a army or core HQ in winter months to an active friendly rail line or a supply depot that's not hindered by prohibitive train for that core or army HQ or goes through an enemy zone of control that uh, doesn't have a friendly unit in it. All right. Oh my god, I just thought of that. Yeah, that'd be Austrian too then. Um, that's good. <clears throat> that makes sense. Okay. So we had a bunch of German troops here this little micro salient. Uh, due to the fact these two L's here are the lengths of my, and so are these as well, the lengths of, but I've, I'm starting to insert uh, the Eighth Army, I'm starting to figure out who's, who's who and what's what and all that stuff. Um, so these are the, the as furthest as I can put a, uh, a, a headquarters and not suffer penalties either for an attack uh, well, it would then therefore be, uh, no, 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 no. Uh, always if I suffered a, count, um, a penalty for counterattack, I would obviously suffer a penalty for attacks because they're uh, reduced down to three. And it gets even worse because I've compounded it for winter time. It would be if I lose the line of control, uh, uh, my line of communication for my headquarters, I can only make a, a, an attack if I'm adjacent to the, uh, to the unit. Uh, um, otherwise, it would be two hexes away for a counterattack, so it's not very nice. That being said, I looked here, I saw a bunch of areas, not all of them, but um, none of them I could, uh, and quite a few I couldn't entrench. Yeah, I understand, I can still use the defensible train for the, um, from the swamp and so on and so forth. That being said, let's take a look at the train as well. Remember, it's hex sides, somebody attacking you from you can uh, pick the adjacent hex sides. There's a few here that start not looking too good when I started to retreat as well as the Russians are able to attack me from multiple points because I was in that micro salient. Okay. Thirdly or fourthly or whateverly, where am I going to go? I just mentioned that I can't extend the rail lines and uh, oh yeah I, maybe I didn't say that. I can't extend uh, any of the rail heads uh, it, like convert uh, Russian rail into German rail um, until May. I can't do it during uh, uh, winter and it's every alternate turn. In other words, what I'm saying is I can't go any, f I can only go out and it, like mount an attack three, ha three movement hexes out. I can't go anywhere from here. What's the point? Uh, and like I've mentioned before is that the Russians have all these intact rail and so on and so forth They've got the advantage at this moment in time in this area So I said okay enough's enough as well as when I started trying to plop uh, Troops down all over the place. Uh, I was like Jesus Christ. I'm running out of troops real quick I had to start inserting actually cavalry into strategic spots. I don't think you probably can see them uh, strategic spots looking going okay where probably the Russians won't attack and I've got some amazing defensive capabilities um, and just left them there kind of thing I was like I need their placeholder or whatever <clears throat> okay so I went screw this I'm going to do it like I said I'm not going anywhere I'm not mounting an offensive in that way anyways let them take it it's it's weird these hexes are so bizarre hold on let me um I clear my throat. All right. <clears throat> now, you know what I mean? Like, as I was going back, it's like, it, you're great to be the attacker 
or ca uh, or defender this away than you are the other way kind of thing that in these spots anyways i decided i'm going to um i i, I think i ended up uh contracting my um front by about 100 kilometers it's mostly for um the 12th army here they're going to be quite happy especially due to the fact they've already extended in an additional 20 over here I, I still have it as a pink person here i'm going to try to not it's called remember the operation uh, whatever operation shift so i'm not going to move ask i'm asking the austrians not to move these guys until it's time to move on the month i don't want the russians seeing what we're doing they're I'm a little worried because I have to use the, actually that's going to be uh, um, uh, uh, Corps Com uh, Commandant uh, Von Bosma, um, he's going to be, uh, that's his uh, Corps there. Actually I went back, I went properly, so I think he's Corps number, hold on, I switched it over, I started rather than calling it Corps 10 and all that stuff. So Corps Commandant Von Bosma is the 31st Corps. Um, yeah, I have to put a core there. So they probably are going to wonder, the Russians are like, well, what the hell's going on over there? And I've got the 12th Army HQ over here as well. It's just because I need to maximize. So I'm going to be focusing any diversionary attack. This is attack B. Attack A is over there with the 11th and 9th. We've got to get rid of those. Uh, it's not just somewhat politically of trying to get rid of them out of East Prussia. Um, I've got way more advantages up there than down here. I've got all the railheads. Uh, they're in my territory. territory so I've, I've got access to all kinds of things. And um, yeah, that's really about it. It's a much shorter front. It's ridiculously tiny. It's kind of like my little version of the Western Front. I've got two armies up there taking up one, two, hold on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Hold on. I'll count them out too far away. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. So twenty, so that's a four hundred kilometer front. I've got two armies. I know it sounds crazy, but it's the eastern, you know, it's the eastern Europe uh, conflict zone. What do you want? And then I've got, uh, oh, I didn't count, did I count the eighth? No, let's just leave them there. They're different. So those are, that's my main focus uh, point. And then I've got the eighth. That's, that's uh, 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 120, 140, 160, 180, 200, 220, 240, 260, 280. So 280 kilometer front. And then the 12th Army has 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 120, 140, 160, 180, 200, 220, 240, 260, 280, <clears throat> 300. So it's, you know, and remember, I just said, I just uh, reduced it by 100 kilometers. <clears throat> and, it was, and it was all, um, and it was all uh, 12th Army. I'm happy. I've got nowhere to go. I know, it felt weird. I was like, oh, darn it. I'm like, I'm, you know, getting away from uh, Radim and all that stuff. But the reality is I'll get them another way. I'll get them this way. Uh, I've, I've got this is where I've got to go uh, essentially and wait till May and I'll just take my uh, sweet effing time I hope this is the way to go um, I, oh, because I can use the friendly uh, rail line like I said I, before I didn't know I could do that I made this little um, ridiculous part of my narrative the, the Tarnoff uh, understanding where, you know, the Germans get exclusive use. They still do. <laughs> it sucks, though. It's, gonna, it's going to eat up, uh, regardless what they do, it's going to eat up the, um, like, I'm not going to, you see what I mean? I'm not going to let the Germans use two uh, divisions to get across the single track, because it's not their own rail. But it's going to eat up Austro-Hungarian <laughs> rail capacity. <laughs> Sorry, dudes. That's the way it is. I'll figure out some other way around it, but I don't know. We already gave you 16 supply points, so shush. Uh, that's it. I'm really happy. I don't know how I'm going to incorporate the Russians going in there. I'm sure they're going to be happy as well. I mean, they've, you know, shortened their line uh, monstrously. It's not good for me, but... Uh, oh, shit. I didn't think of that. Because they just went from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7... So I reduced it from, yeah, shit. 
Well, it's I've got to like think about it for myself as well. Like I said, they've all they already had uh, most of the or the good cards in their hand or whatever. Oh darn it! I thought there's probably a few other things I wanted to discuss. Like I said, I've been uh, slowly popping people on. It's taken a long time. It's a fun long time, and um, oh yeah, I remember. Uh, um, Wardrobe Plays World War II was asking about, or I think it was him, he was asking about uh, whether or not there was um, a, a, an aerial component to Dervel Krieg. There is in the Grand Campaign, and I kind of alluded to it that there wasn't. There is. It's uh, an air super superiority thing, and I don't know all the intricacies, but essentially it's about combat. Like, you, you, can, you get tokens or whatever. Um, and you know you roll for air superior superiority based whatever year. I'll take a look at it, but I'm a, I'm going on a, on a different attack uh, uh, in a sense. I want to use it more for reconnaissance. I think that was what um, in at least at this point in the war I'm trying to look at it that way. Maybe I'll incorporate other parts of it uh, his bit later. I maybe it'll like affect die roll or something. Uh, you know, when we get into like uh, 1916 or something, when aircraft uh, become more and more and uh, the tactics become more sophisticated. I don't know. I think I mentioned that uh, the Germans are going to use up uh, 10 supply points, uh, no, 12, sorry, to get six. Um, that's a lot. To use up, uh, to get six reconnaissance um, uh, aerial, well, aerial asset points. And that allows me, based, remember I was taking a look at uh, the average distance for uh, certain planes, like I was looking at reconnaissance planes, and basically factors down to a round trip is eight hexes. And I was like, okay, I'm good with that, and I'm doing it at this moment in time. It has to occur from a um, an army or a core HQ that's in, uh, has at least one hex side in, in uh, clear terrain. I thought, I thought that was okay. And then you just mark out a line of eight, and there you go. And that's essentially just the, an abstraction. I'm good with that. And then you just can take a look at any enemy uh, strength points that are in there. You can, you know, look what's under the hood, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Yep, we're going to, uh, I'm glad about this. I'm happy about this. I think I'm slowly learning or, or whatever. Yet again, it's like pare down. Trust me, man, I, every five seconds, so I want to go back and try to make multiple attacks all over the place. I'm like, no, Chris, you can't do that. It's not It's not the way it works. And I still don't even know how what the Russians are up to, for Christ's sakes. You know, it's like, uh, there's two people playing here, man. It's not just me going, oh, I'm, I can do whatever I want. It's like, no, the Russians are, I've got their own uh, tricks up their sleeve and, uh, you know, their own plans and so on and so forth. That's why... I've put all my reserve divisions, I've only got 11 of them, but still, you know, um, they're all four strength points in a movement of five. I've, rail I've put them in train, so that's affected my, sure, it's affected my rail capacity, and I'm hoping I've put them in some strategic spots. I've got one, uh, I've got uh, two in Katowice, uh three um, kind of near some... Um, Equidistant between the rail, uh, some railheads in um, uh, Poland, and then I've got another one right beside the railhead because it's kind of equidistant to those other things, and then getting towards East Prussia, and then I have the other and the other three. I'll I'll have three reserve divisions, and the other ones in Allenstein, and uh, because I don't know uh, what's going to happen with, um, but they're all on uh, double rail, man. Trust me, that's there's no screwing around there. Um, that's it, really. I think for now, I'm just trying to... Um, it sucks having such a small um, force. And like I said, I've already stolen. An, um, oh my god. Think about this. It's just the way it's modeling real life is freaking me right out. So I took 20 uh, infantry divisions from the Western Front. I factored it in. It's like, okay, they either have to come from re immediately. There's no fooling around here. They either are trained out or um, uh, I remove their reinforcements if they're gonna, they were going to come in. But I'm pretty damn sure the chalkboard or the little board I have on my stairway going up, uh, that's factored in for January 1915. I hope to God it isn't. But if it is, that means I've just... Uh, taking out 112 
uh, strength points from the Western Front. Uh, that completely flattens a lot of the things I've wanted to do and it's you know um, made me open uh, to whatever the French uh, I'm not looking at the British uh, what the French do um, and then you look at it historically there was always that tug and tug and pull between West and East you know of uh, trying to figure out like where do you do it and I was like mm, because I'm so you know I'm, I'm an Easterner what do you want me to say I mean I started here so I'm always going to be an Easterner. That's just the way it is. I mean, you know, my God. All right. Uh, yeah, I can. I'm going to go and uh, I will show one more thing because I've been wanting to show it for ages. I picked up several versions of these. They're columnar paper. So I'll show you the first one. When I saw it, I went, "Oh my God, that's Charles the Tour all over you, all over the place." I was like, "He must. He'd be so proud of me." Um, so I'm using them uh, essentially just as a general way of getting around uh, to take a look at my dudes. This is the first one I got, but it's not very good. Um, so I went went into those things. I got one that's two columns and six columns or something. But it's neat because every time I uh, uh, pop them open, I, I, I can you know I just get a, a Charles Latoura vibe. It's uh, I love it. That's it. Um, cheapers. And then I've got this Pandora's box, or or I don't know what you want to call it, uh, the box of delights, um, right behind me, which is like every other front, you know, uh, the Arabian conflict zone, and oh my God, Mesopotamia, and so on and so forth. Away we go. All right. I hope you're having fun, man. See you later.